Good morning, first grade. We're ready for chapter seven of Junie B. But before we get started, we're gonna do another's, another author's purpose activity. You're gonna decide if the author's purpose is to persuade you to make you think what he or she thinks. Is it to inform you? Is it to teach you something using facts? Or is it to entertain you, to just keep you happy or make you have emotions when you read it? All right, here we go. Dear mom, I don't think we should get a cat. I want to get a snake. Jason has a boa constrictor. He keeps it in a big glass tank and it has never escaped. Snakes don't eat as much as cats do and they are very interesting animals to watch. Cats are boring. Besides, I think I'm allergic to them. Love, Mandy. Do you think Mandy's purpose was to persuade her mom to get a boa constrictor instead of a cat? Was it to inform her mom that, cat, that boa constrictors are better than cats? Or was it to entertain her and just tell her about boa constrictors? What do you think? Write your answer in your AMI notebook. All right, guys, your answer is to persuade. She's telling her mom that her mom may think they should get a cat, but she wants a snake. And she's telling them that you can keep a snake in a glass tank and it's never escaped, so you don't have to worry about that. You can say that you don't have to buy as much food because snakes eat less than cats um, and that they're interesting to watch. She's telling her that she thinks cats are boring. She doesn't want her mom to get her a cat. She's trying to persuade. If you got that right, give yourself a smile and give your brain a kiss. If you got it wrong, that's okay. We can try again next time. All right, when we left off, Junie B had just decided that she was okay with becoming the Easter Bunny so that the boys and girls could take pictures of her. Her friends persuaded her that it was all right by telling them that they would love to be the Easter Bunny because they would be like celebrities. We're gonna read chapter seven, Polite Rules. When I get to a picture page, I will show you the pictures after I'm done with the page. Here we go. I look down at myself. My bunny feet were bigger than clown feet. Also, my ears were floppish. And my bunny hands looked like giant paw mitts. I held them out in front of me. I could take a pie out of the oven with these things, I think. Lucille skipped around me and clapped. Yay, yay, we have a bunny, we have a bunny. She sang real happy. Daddy, daddy, the bunny's down. Come get, whoopsie, Miss Carson skipped a whole page. After that, she grabbed my bunny paw and she started skipping me to the flower garden. Only too bad for me, cause skipping with the giant bunny feet does not actually work that good. And so, plop, I fell right over in the grass. Some of the children started to laugh. Lucille shooed them away. Then she quick hurried to pick me up. Only her dress started to get wrinkly. And so she dropped me in the grass again. And she smoothed her skirt very neat. Plus also she fluffed her hair and she shined her shoes. After that, she yelled to her daddy, real urgent. When there's Junie B. Jones, kerplunk on the ground and Lucille helping her up. Daddy, daddy, the bunny's down. Come get the bunny, come get the bunny. The daddy ran over and picked me up. Then he started carrying me to the flower garden. It felt embarrassing up there. I tapped on his head. This does not actually make me feel like a celebrity, I said. The daddy kept on going. I tapped on his head again. No one actually carries Santa, I said. Just then we got to the flower garden. The daddy put me down and he showed me the photographer. His name was Bud. Bud sat me in the bunny seat and he arranged my floppy ears. After that, he went to his camera and he took my picture. Beautiful, he said. Gorgeous, I smiled. I liked this bud. Pretty soon the children lined up to get their pictures taken with me. And guess what? My bestest friend Herbert was the very first one in line. He zoomed in my seat real happy. I think you look nice in that bunny costume, he said. You don't even look silly hardly. I smiled again. Thank you, Herbert. You don't look silly either, I said back. After that, both of us said cheese and Bud took our picture. Lenny came next. Then after Lenny came Jose, and after Jose came Shirley, and after Shirley came all the other children in room one, except for not May. Instead, May sat in the grass all by herself. 
because she was not a celebrity, of course. I said cheese a million times, but kept on saying beautiful, gorgeous to me. I felt very puffery inside. I am an excellent celebrity, I told him. I am making these children's day, but laughed. I do not know why. Finally, all the pictures got taken. Bud shook my paw meant goodbye. I will miss him. After that, Herb and I walked back to the picnic grounds. And wait till you hear this. Lucille's mother was passing out baskets for the egg hunt. I started to run to get my basket. Only what do you know? Ker plop. I tripped and fell in the grass again. The children laughed some more. I pretended I didn't care. It's fun to fall, I said real silly. Even Herb rolled his eyes at that one. Lucille's mother helped me up and gave me a basket. I looked at her very upset. Yeah, only how am I supposed to hunt for eggs in these big giant bunny feet? I said, I can't even run in these clumsy things. Plus also, I can't tackle or scuffle. The mother looked shocked at me. Tackle, she said, scuffle? Oh my no, this is going to be a polite egg hunt, Junie B. There will be no running or tackling or scuffling. We're all going to behave like little ladies and gentlemen. Just then, there was a loud commotion behind me. I turned around. May was pointing and yelling at Sheldon and Lucille. Stop whispering secrets, Lucille, she shouted. You're telling Sheldon where the golden egg is. I know you are. I'm telling your daddy. I'm telling your daddy. The daddy rushed over there and separated those guys. This bickering has got to stop, he said. If you three can't behave yourselves, you won't be hunting for eggs at all. I smiled at the commotion. That would be a nice development, I thought. After he finished scolding them, Lucille's daddy blew a whistle, and he told us to line up at the starting line. Everyone zoomed past me. I lifted my feet and stepped real careful. Then finally I got there, and the daddy started telling us the egg hunt rules. Rule number one, he said, no running. Rule number two, no pushing, pulling, or grabbing. Rule number three, no trampling the flowers and the plants. And finally, rule number four, do not go anywhere that is roped off. He looked up and down the line at us. Does everyone understand the rules, he asked. I thought for a minute, then I raised my hand. Also, there is no tackling or scuffling, correct, I said, because I've already been informed about the situation. The daddy looked awed at me. Well, of course there's no tackling or scuffling, Ginny B, he said. That goes without saying. I thought some more. Then I pointed at my giant bunny feet. Plus, there should be no tripping the bunny. Right, I asked, cause the bunny is wearing unfair feet. The daddy frowned. There's no tripping anyone, Junie B, he said. I nodded. Yes, but there's especially no tripping the bunny, correct? I asked again. The daddy sucked in his cheeks. Okay, fine, us, there's especially no tripping the bunny, he said. Now, may I continue? I smiled, and the daddy continued. The hunt will begin when I count to three, he said. You will have 30 minutes to hunt for the eggs. When I blow my whistle, you will all stop hunting immediately, and you will bring your baskets back to the table. Roger raised his hand. What's the price for finding the most eggs, he asked. Lucille's mother smiled. Then she held up a big wad of flowers. The person who has the most eggs will receive this beautiful bouquet for his or her mother, she said. They're irises from our flower garden. I picked them myself. Aren't they lovely? Roger looked at the irises. I think my mother would rather have a set of Power Rangers, he said. Lucille's mother made squinty eyes at him. That meant no Power Rangers, I believe. Just then, the daddy blew his whistle. Okay, is everyone ready to start, he hollered. Ready, we hollered back. Ready, ready, ready. And so the daddy raised his hand in the air and one, two, three. The egg hunt 
was started. All right, chapter eight is called Swooping. I want you to think about today, what do you think is going to happen to Junie B in the egg hunt? She has big giant bunny feet and floppy ears. She's not supposed to tackle or scuffle, but she's already fell over two times. What do you think is going to happen when she starts hunting for those eggs? I want you to write your prediction in your AMI notebook. Go ahead and make sure you write the date at the top, but let's write it the long way and practice adding our commas and capitalizing our day and our month because that is good handwriting practice, okay? Have a very great day and I will be back with the next chapter tomorrow. Bye guys.